Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Crucible Chat. As usual, my name is Mike, otherwise known as Gadget Addicts, and every Saturday, Crucible Chat brings you whatever's on my mind at the time. I can talk about pretty much whatever it is I want. And this week, it's not going to be a big rant, it's not going to be a huge to-do. I just wanted to talk about the fact that this week we lost Sir Terry Pratchett. Now... I'm not the world's greatest reader, I haven't gone through a lot of series, but I adore the Discworld books. Like, everyone thinks high fantasy should be like Tolkien and uh, uh, Robert Jordan and people like that. I just, I like Discworld because I think there, there was always this different edge to it. Sir Terry Pratchett had such a way of writing his books. You know, the, they were, they started off as kind of like pastiches of fantasy in general. And kind of moved on to more just pastiches of modern life and the life that he was living. And I think that's what makes them so brilliant. The first uh, Discworld book I read was The Colour of Magic. Um, I think my mother has a first edition and I read that years ago when I was a teenager. And since then I think I've worked my way through about maybe half of the series. Um, some I've liked more than others, I'll admit. I haven't worked my way through all of them. There's 40 something of them. There's, it's a lot to read. Um, but I always, no matter which character I was, it was focusing on, be it Rincewind, the Witches, Death, whoever it was, there was always this gentle human humour to everything that Sir Terry Pratchett put into his books. And that's why I loved them so much. Uh, my favourite one, incidentally, is Mort. Because I, I like the idea of Death having an assistant and not knowing what to do with him. And, you know, visiting Death's home... Um, where it's bigger on the inside, if you're a Doctor Who fan, even though uh, Terry Pratchett actually did come out and say that all co- all links between Death and the Doctor are entirely coincidental. Um, but I always like the idea of Death's House. It's, it's this really specific thing, and something I always pick up whenever I read more, that Death's House um, is wrong. Like, doors are, at the same time, far too big and far too small, simply because Death hasn't understood scale. <laughs> he hasn't quite mastered that yet. But he creates this world for himself and his adoptive daughter. And then it's the way that Ankh Morpork works and the, the actual areas of the disc world that you, you go to. You know, the um, the chaotic way that the city works, that it's like part Victorian London, part dystopian nightmare. Um, even down to the little things like the fact that uh, democracy doesn't work in Ankh-Morpork and they go to a, a one man one vote so there is one single man who votes on the government and he usually votes himself in but it's just it's the most surreal thing and the cool cast of characters that he had over the space of all these books but what upset me the most about this one is the fact that it was it was Alzheimer's that got got him you know he did he, I know he was campaigning for assisted suicide to be made legal but he didn't commit suicide he just died of natural causes but it was the Alzheimer's that did it and I know what it's like to have a relative with Alzheimer's my grand my grandmother died a few years ago uh, she had Alzheimer's and this is if you haven't experienced somebody with Alzheimer's before it is the strangest thing in the world because the only person who suffers, the only people who suffer with Alzheimer's is is not the, who, the person who actually has it. It's the family. If people talk about when somebody dies that they've lost them. You know, they've lost a family member. But it, with Alzheimer's, it's that's more true than ever because that person that that you've known for all of your life is still there. But they're not the same person because the what's going on in their brain changes them so wildly. You know, my grandma, I mean, she remembered that I was a, a friendly face. She she remembered that she was that I was nice to her. But she didn't remember who I was. I mean, me and Emma would go and visit, and she thought Emma was married to one of my cousins. You know, she she knew she'd been to Emma's wedding, but didn't associate Emma with me. She associated Emma with my cousin Alex. Whereas, um, you know, she, because one of my aunties was kind of large, uh, doing a lot of the caring for and organising stuff, she then associated her in a bad way because she was telling my grandmother what to do. And it stressed her out and it upset her. And then it was almost like my auntie became a sworn enemy 
you know, and that was the hardest thing to deal with, this person that you've known all your life not being there, but the body being there. You know, it, it looks like my grandmother, but it's not because the Alzheimer's has changed her so big, uh, so wildly. And that is the, the cruel irony about Terry Pratchett. He was one of the world's most intelligent, brilliant minds, especially when it came to writing, but, you know, his, his vocabulary was excellent. He didn't suffer fools gladly. He tore people to shreds if he had a reason to. Apparently, the, the, I was reading something, a quote from one of his friends who runs the Discworld shop in uh, down south somewhere. And he said, I've been bollocked by a great many people, but you haven't been bollocked until you've been bollocked by Sir Terry Pratchett. <laughs> Which is just something I find utterly astonishing. Because you can imagine if he were to tell you off about something, you would feel like the world's biggest idiot because he was so smart. Um, and you see, like, after he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, he appeared on like TV programs because he was talking, he was raising the subject of assisted suicide and raising Alzheimer's um, to the public consciousness. And you would see him on like Breakfast News with whoever was on at the time. Ask, ask him a question, oh, how, how can you write when it's like this? And What's it like to have Alzheimer's? And he was tearing strips off them, but not yelling, not being angry or anything like that, just very quietly saying the most the stuff to humiliate them in the worst possible ways. And they just didn't get it. It was all those like, lovely, fluffy, flowery questions from the news anchors and the casters. And then Sir Terry Pratchett was just taking the piss out of them mercilessly, and that's something that I always respected him for because he was such an amazing wordsmith and he knew exactly how to put the right idea forward. Listen to me ramble on here about him. It's it's quite strange to think that there is a world now without Terry Pratchett. And it'll be the same feeling that when people like, you know, like when Stephen Fry dies. What's the world going to be like without Stephen Fry? What's it going to be like without um, uh, Stephen Hawking's? You know, the, there are people in this world who have been around in a big way who have contributed so much to humanity in either art or science or literature or what have you. And you can't ever imagine a world without him. And then you suddenly put into one and it, it does feel colder. It, it, it is so strange. I've never met Terry Pratchett. My mother did. My mother met him at a, a, a writing conference, I believe. Um, and he signed her a copy of Reaper Man saying, read it and reap, which I, again, I always found amusing. But um, yeah, it, it's a, I never met the man, but his books had such a profound effect on me and, just as someone who enjoys the literature that he writes it, it's quite strange so yeah it's a it's really weird to think that we're now in a world without Terry Pratchett um, he brought so many joy to so many people from his books um, so yeah it just it, it is very upsetting because there are some there are some people who don't deserve a disease like Alzheimer's and Terry Pratchett well, in fact, you know, nobody deserves Alzheimer's. But Terry Pratchett was just such a wonderful man, and to have that kind of disease, all it can prove is if there is a god, he has a cruel sense of humour. But anyway, I didn't want this to ramble on this long, but, you know, I just I got talking, and I just wanted to talk about the man. He was a genius. Um, if you didn't see it, yesterday I put up a video which was based on... Uh, a piece of text that was floating around Facebook in all the tributes. Someone wrote, in Terry Pratchett's style, a death coming to collect Sir Terry. Um, and wrote it all out, death and the rat come to pick up Sir Terry. And it was the most amazing thing because it was as if he'd written it himself. So I'm gonna. There's a link in the description. I'll put an annota annotation on the screen as well. Go have a watch that video. I um, I recited it. I put on a approximate voice for Terry Pratchett. It's nowhere near his actual voice, but you know, I played his part, and I played death, and I narrated it, um, and that was just my little tribute to Sir Terry Pratchett. But thank you for watching this. Good night.